Word on the streets. Fish man show. What's the word on the street? Like who got the beats that be killing the game? Who's up on the scale? Who playing who was the score on the sheet? Fiso the prince got him taking the seat. Got the legends giving us the 411. Fiso must from the OT1. No hating sports and entertainment when we got it all and we're the only ones. And after all that action, I'm a hobby dripping high fashion. Drippy drippy on some rich and nissy, but it's stylish and soak up with passion. If it's giving us less, then we never settle. Make sure you pull up and bring all your medals. Sit back and relax, let's go. It's Fist Mask bringing you the Fist Mask show. It's 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 the Fist Mask show. Hello everyone, welcome to the Fist Mask show. I've got a really interesting topic I want to touch on today. It is, of course, episode 10 of what has been a really good ride. I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring together an all-star cast, the best of the best. And we're going to dissect this very heated topic. Now, I'm sure if you're a football fan, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the promotion, relegation, playoffs. Hey, it's been all happening. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. We're going to dive into it a little bit more. And before I actually start, I want to introduce the people that will be joining me on today's panel. I've got Menzi Novo, a former Nazi Lions and Etiquity Coastals Administrator as well as a former agent who worked with the likes of Tianda Zwane and Jawudu Mangana, as well as Spiso Tanki. I've got Tiani Mabasa, who is the editor and director of a Far Post, one of the fastest growing publications in the country. And of course, the chairman himself, the president of SAFPU, I've got Tula Khanyu. How? Hey. Tula, help me out here. Please, please stop murdering my son. <laughs> no, you gotta give me a chance. You gotta give me a chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it right. Tula Khanyo, how should we do it? Much better, much Hello. better. All right, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I just thought, you know, let me, let me, let me bring you all on board, and let's have a discussion. You know, I think I'm gonna start with the man who, I guess, probably reports on it quite often, and that's you, Tiani. Um, what's going on, Tiani? <laughs> It's a mess. <laughs> yeah, man, it's very, uh, very, very disappointing. And, and firstly, man, before I go any further, you know, just to uh, say, you know, I'm privileged to be part of the group, you know, uh, with the with the president of SAFPO, of course, and Menzi, you know, uh, thanks for inviting me. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, not a good time for us, you know, uh, in terms of South African football, because uh, the last thing you want, you know, is this sort of thing where you look very unprofessional. Uh, I mean, with all due respect to everyone involved, you know, we can do better uh, as South African football. We can't afford to go on and have these sort of issues, you know, time and time again. Uh, we've had it in the past as well, you know, but uh, I think all, we all agree that uh, the league, uh, you know, will have to uh, look at their, uh, you know, this committee and ensure that these things are sorted out um, you know, quickly, you know, this matter that we, we, we want to talk about today uh, happened on, uh, the match happened on uh, 2 January, you know, so that's six months ago. And here we are sitting and talking about something that could have been uh, sorted out in uh, in January. So from my, 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 my side, and I, I know I speak for a lot of South Africans uh, who follow this beautiful game, um, it's quite disappointing. Um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to put it in a nice way, but uh, uh, the bottom line is that uh, we can we can sugarcoat it in any way, and I'm sure uh, even um, you know the president and even Menzi uh, can agree. You know, um, it's it's something that we need to look at, um, and um, you know, and and make sure that moving forward, it never happens again. And I want to bring you into Lakanyo with regards to that because no doubt disappointing, not only for I guess the organization itself, football fans across the country, but you also look at it from a player's point of view, and that's one of the main reasons why I, why I wanted to bring you in today, is to just touch on from a player's perspective as to uh, how does it affect players, you know, I mean, and, and how disappointing is it from a South point of view? Thank you very much, Sri. Uh, but let me just say, I'm really humbled myself being part of this uh, group, and I'm, I mean, I've not been called a star in a long time. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> We hope that we'll be able to live to the expectation as it were. Uh, but look, uh, Tiani is quite correct. I mean, the, uh, where we are in terms of South African football, 
I think there are quite a number of things that we really need to focus on and do better. We can't do much better. There are quite a number of things. And I think the question that begs for an answer here is what really needs to be done? What's to be done in a situation like this? Are there any lessons that we learn? I mean, some three years ago or four years back, we thought, no, what, we're gonna be okay. Because when you go back uh, three years, out of four, four, I mean, three out of four, uh, you, at the end of the season, you complain it was Ajax, it was Mbombela, now it is this uh, team. So something drastically needs to be done. I mean, part of it, it also goes around the issues of promotion and relegation to say, how do we deal with that particular aspect? Is it not time that we should open that discussion? Is it not time that we need to uh, begin to say, uh, look, one of the things that needs to be done is to increase the number of clubs and uh, deal with it. Is it not time that we look at, uh, uh, you know, professionalizing better the NFD, you know, your Glad Africa uh, Championship, so that we close the gap between PSL and that? Because this is more monetary than anything else in our view. And uh, we strongly believe that can happen. But having said that, you know, the players would go there. And, and the, if we close the gap, by the way, it will also assist an impact on the development of football on the, on the country. You start seeing a lot of players, you know, not wanting to go and play for FISO uh, FC simply because FISO pays them a lot of money, but they will still remain there and help us develop. And the benefit of it all will be the national squad. But in this instance, we have seen on a number of occasions, there was a, uh, I mean, Royal AM was supposed to have played Chipa United. So they showed up and they left. The question is, how much of that, in so far as the decision concerned, came from the players? I can tell you this much. Uh, Tiani will tell you, uh, Menzi will tell you, I mean, you are in the space yourself. In the, there is not enough coverage of football in the uh, NFD. And sometimes players look up to this. This is an opportunity for players. They look up to this and say, hey, I can go out there and play. In any event, it's them who we put the club there. It's them who've been playing all along. And they say, we've sent a chance. We want to we wanna go and play. I mean, God forbid. And let's just hope that the gods of Mam Kiza will be with her and she wins. But failure to win uh, this battle will have to go back and say, but what would have stopped them to say, let us go out there and play under protest and so forth. But this affects the psyche of the players. One minute you are playing, the next minute you're not playing. And nobody talks about that particular thing. And I think it's also time that we look at that particular aspect when we beef the team. And not only on this subject. So that in our team, when we talk professionalization of the game, we also have your psychologists. You have uh, people who are able to deal with and address this particular matter. I spoke with uh, a few players there. They, want, they would have loved to play uh, FISO as it were. But uh, look, uh, let's see how it all goes. And uh, uh, we hope that the best team will win. But Tiani in the beginning raised a very important issue. It's an issue of expediting, you know, the, on the issues of the cases. This was on the 2nd uh, of Jan. Only now the matter has been uh, dealt with. What is it that we need to do? There's a national dispute resolution chamber which we fought for for quite a long time. And that national dispute resolution chamber should be utilized because this is the issues of football within the game. Maybe as time goes on, we'll see whether we want to take uh, football issues out of football or we want to remain in the football tribunal so that issues are speedily addressed. What happens now if everybody wants to go to the court? That might be you know, one of the issues that we really need to look into and discuss and say whether it was FIFA right or wrong in saying, let us resolve the issues of football within football. Yeah. Really fascinating to, to obviously get the, the thoughts of you two. And I know, Menzi, you are in Durban. You would have had, had your ear on the ground with regards to maybe what has transpired. Make it, maybe take us through, I guess, the, the general consensus within the Durban football community. And, and I guess your thoughts as well, as a football man yourself, with regards to what has transpired, who's wrong, who's right. And, and do you feel that this entire thing has been handled in the right way? Thank you for the opportunity, Fiso. I'd like to echo my guests, uh, fellow panelists' uh, sentiments by just uh, thanking you for the opportunity of, of being part of such a prestigious panel of uh, experts in, in our industry. Um, Fiso, to answer your question, there's so many angles in which I can take to try and answer this question. Godwanji, I'd like to start by saying the following. Umam Kize has probably received the worst legal advice ever the worst legal advice. 
and it came at a huge cost financially for her. Like U -U -U Mr. Tulokhanyo was saying, they should have gone and played the playoffs under protest. That's, that's what they should have done because the matter was already in the hands of the courts. That's what they should have done. I mean, we, we keep hearing this, this issue with regards to playing under protest. Um, I think maybe, you know, from, from, a, from a person who maybe doesn't follow football as closely or follow legal matters, can maybe, Tiana, you just take us through, uh, the, I guess, the subject of playing under protest? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I agree, you know, with, uh, with those that uh, say, um, you know, they should have played under protest. You never know. You play under protest, maybe you win the, uh, the playoffs. Um, it's a win-win situation. Uh, but now they've put themselves in a very, very difficult position because, um, you know, if obviously they lose uh, the case, it would have meant that they go to the playoffs. That opportunity has gone now. It's gone now because they missed uh, uh, the two matches, you know. So I agree with Menzi. This is bad advice, um, you know, legal advice. And I think, um, you know, they should have at least tried to, um, you know, uh, in some ways, all of their pride. And understand that um, you know they are fighting their battles from all angles, and uh, perhaps you know playing uh, uh, in the playoffs under protest, uh, it could have helped their cause. But now they are in a very very difficult position. Yeah, it's 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 a very difficult uh, position to be in. And again, you just look at it from a from a holistic point of view. You look at it from a point of view of, I guess, general football fans. You look at it from a a, a position of. Uh, people who maybe don't even follow football closely, they, they, the eyes on football, and then all of a sudden it's like, really, do we really want to invest in, 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 in a sport that's going to, I guess, behave in that manner or going to conduct itself in that manner? Uh, and, and, you know, how is that going to work? You know, Menzi, I, I want you to come in here because it looks like you're a lot more settled now. Um, so, yeah, maybe just share your sentiments before we move on and, and, and dissect the, the subject a little bit further. Yeah, okay. Issue number one was, for me, the legal advice that uh, Iroyal AM has been receiving. I think it's, it's legal advice that is not given by people who understand how football law works. Because it, in terms of law, the different segments and the different aspects of law, when it comes to dealing with sports law, there are certain things that you need to take into consideration. And I'm sure my guests, um, my fellow panelists have been following the the developments over the past week, um, the former uh, PSL prosecutor, all um, Mr. Zolama Jav, advocate Zolama Jav, has been giving free advice to the legal teams of both parties and saying, listen, the worst thing you guys could do is go and play matches um, and not play the matches and not pitch. If you understand what brought Iroyal AM to the situation of Abuya right now, you would understand that it is very difficult for Iroyal AM to, to win the case on any court, Miyamo. The issue that led to us being where we are is a gross incompetence of the administration here PSL, to be honest with you. And if that is what Umam Kize is fighting, then she should be playing the games while fighting that. Not fighting that based on the fact that I won the league. You did not win the league because there was a pending case that would have awarded another team with three points. They did not win the league. What Dr. Salah is that is Kuku that deserved we had three points. We can then argue, Uguti, Ipulukwane City now, we advise APSL before the game saying they will not be able to field with the players that are required for the under 23 um, um, uh, allotted numbers. Abanga Akiwisha Futnuguti PSL had an opportunity to postpone the Polokwane versus Kukune game way back in, 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 in January 2 when they requested the PSL, but no, guys, we won't be able to field a team because we are hit by COVID. PSL did not heed to those calls, but Kobe Gabadali Summer Game. So that's another issue on its own. So to be advised by a very expensive legal team, don't play the games because you are the legitimate winner of the league is, is, is beyond. Then issue number two, the incompetence here, PSL. I've said this to you on many occasions. So Uguti, number one, you cannot be the judge and the jury and the player and the plaintiff at the same time. What do I mean by that? You can't own the franchise run the administration of the franchise, adjudicate yourself, and be the legal counsel for yourself. If you are owning a franchise, you need to adhere to a different body that administers a set of rules. If you can't account to anybody, then that's a problem. Issues of gross incompetence 
like we've had for the past three or four seasons, the Ajax Cape Town issue, Jelobu Tulohani was saying, the Ndoro issue. Very disappointing, no doubt. Uh, I, I know that KZN was, was, was priding itself on, I guess, potentially having another team in the South African top flight, the DSTV Premiership. Not ideal. And again, you know, we go back to that issue of playing under protest, Tulakhan, you mentioned it as well. And it's, 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 it's one that's difficult to understand, you know, because, I mean, as, as a sports person, you kind of understand, you, or you should, especially if you're an owner, understand how the ins and outs of, I guess, the sports law within the, the sport itself work. Um, again, I go back to an issue of, I guess, buying teams haphazardly, you know, do football owners at times know exactly what they're getting into? And maybe that's a debate for another day, but maybe you can also touch on that, Tula. No, quite correctly. Maybe we must just take uh, two, three, four steps back. And the, the last games, the last uh, uh, games of the, of the season, the trophy normally would have been between, would have been between uh, Sikukuni and uh, 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 Royal AM. But guess what happens? Royal AM wins. After winning, and they know very well that they are not the champions. They know that they are not the champions in terms of the rules and in terms of what is before them, because there was an arbitration of SPN where he had said, no, the three points must be taken. When they went to the final game, they knew that there was that uh, ruling already. But guess what they do? They play the game, they win, they buy poor players uh, uh, medals, and they parade in them to say they are the champions. What does that do to the players? <laughs> and this is where, in our view, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, sorry to laugh, Tula, but I mean, <laughs> you're taking me back to <laughs> it's it's it. Uh, this is absurd. Then they decide to say, We are the champions, we don't care what you say as an authority of football or of professional football in the league. That's exactly what they were saying, and this is why, at this particular point, they would take any advice that says. No, you are the champions. Do not go and play because you are already uh, the champ. So they long time decided. But we're saying one of the things that was supposed to have happened, maybe the league was supposed to have looked into this matter. Should we not bring these people to or discipline a Royal AM for bringing the club into the league into disrepute? How do you go out there and you say you are the champion? You, you parade yourself in your pronouncement and all other things that followed in terms of that. So this is where I think in terms of the disciplinary committee of the league, this matter was supposed to have been brought forth to say, this is what's happened. But what does that do to the psyche of the players? Here are the players who leaves Royal AM, KZN, and they go home, they are told they are champions. What does that do? They come back, you are told, no, you are no longer champions. You must go fight and play. Do you think how much is left in these players to go and play football? Tomorrow, come the 28th, uh, one of the teams gets promoted. To, of course, they will be promoted, whether Richards Bay or, or, or Chipper United. What happens to these uh, to this group of players who could easily have played the uh, playoffs and won the league and go forward? But fundamentally, I think the issue here is that we have, and this is this is what I see happening in football all the time. Yes, we welcome investment in football, but also people who invest in football they must also give themselves time to understand the surroundings and understanding the game, you know, how this football work and so forth. It is their responsibility. And you know, you cannot be a jack of all trades. Sometimes you will deal with issues of sports. Menzi raises a very important part and say, here we're dealing with issues of sport. You've got FIFA that governs football in nature. So are you going to dismiss everything that ought to happen within football? And when you go back, there's a reason why FIFA never wanted you know, government or any other other courts or so and so being involved, you know, on this particular matter. There's a simple process, by the way. When there's, an, when there's a, a, a disciplinary hearing, a tribunal will sit at the, at the, city, at the, at the, at the level of the PSL at the NDRC. After that, it will go for arbitration. After arbitration, you go straight, of course, to, you have to go to CAS to go and, and check whether and CAS uh, outcome is binding. I mean, we've dealt with this matter. We've done it before where we took uh, Amazulu and we ended up at uh, a case. They were docked three points and that's it. And life moved on. So I think it's about time that in each and every year, you know, uh, people need to be workshopped. Uh, directors need to be workshopped in terms of the rules of the game. 
and in terms of what is expected of the league and what are their responsibilities and so forth. So that you just do not become emotional and decide, you know, you can have resources, but the resources are not necessarily football. In football, you've got legal issues. In football, you've got the rules of the game. And those rules must be a, a, a thing, must be respected as it were. But I think the league would have to crack a whip a bit, you know, uh, to whoever is uh, without necessarily undermining their rights, to whoever is responsible for bringing it into, into uh, disrepute fiscal. Yeah, and I guess, Tiani, you can come in here with regards to that. And it's always disappointing that, you know, you look at 2nd of January. I mean, you ask yourself, I mean, I mean, at, at that stage of the season, I don't know exactly how the league table looked, but if, you, if, if those teams are in the running for the playoffs, surely as administrators and whoever's running against the, 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 the ship, you got to look ahead and saying, if we don't resolve this as soon as possible, it could create potential drama in terms of playoff spots, in terms of winning the league, as we saw in this case. Why does it take so long for disputes to be resolved? Yeah, you know, um, you know, to answer your question, Fiso, I mean, uh, the chairman of the DC, Nande Becker, has said, no, it, it doesn't have a big team uh, that affects them. You know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know everything, but I would expect that the, as the league, you know, if uh, the, the, this department is lacking in some way, uh, they have to sort it out. But um, I have to go back to what the president was saying, the president of SAFU. And um, out of all uh, the issues that we discussed and every uh, thing we focus on with regards to all these things, uh, we never pay attention to what uh, happens to the players, you know? Uh, now you're probably sitting on a few players who, uh, whose contracts are actually expiring on the 30th of June. When they played that last match, some of them are unemployed uh, within a matter of hours. So, you know, we also have to uh, pay a lot of attention uh, to uh, what this does to the players because uh, at the end of the day, they are the main role players uh, in this whole thing. So what I see is that we treat players like maybe traffic lights, you know, they just change, you know, from red to green and, you know, it doesn't work like that. I mean, everything that I see ignores, uh, you know, what the players are going through, you know. Uh, you, 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 you go home, uh, you, you, you know, the league is, uh, is done, you, you've got a, a few weeks to, to, to rest and then you're called back to say the, the playoffs are on, you know, um, and uh, you don't get time to, to spend with it in so many, many ways. It affects the, the the players, so I'll agree with the with the president that look, uh, it's it's high time we look at that. As much as we are going to look at uh, beefing up the the DC and um, ensuring that these things don't happen moving forward again, we, we want to deal uh, with the same issues. I mean, if I were to give you other examples, Mister, uh, I mean, um, about 15 years ago, there was the case of PJ Stars and there were dog points and so on and so on. And I uh, remember it delayed the season a little bit. Now we talk about 15 years ago. I don't, know if, I don't even have to uh, mention what has happened since then. You know, it just shows you that we are not moving, you know, in the right direction. So it's high time that we, we really look at the issues affecting, um, you know, uh, uh, football in, in, this, in this aspect. So that's the only way we can actually move forward. But don't forget, you know, the role players in this whole thing, the players, you know, look after them. Uh, make sure that whatever we are doing, um, you know, it's in their best interest. Yeah, I think both of you just made a, a really phenomenal point with regards to players, you know, and no doubt, you know, players at times treated like commodities. It's just one of those things where straight away, you know, you, you I mean, we've brought it up in, in this discussion. I actually haven't heard it in any other discussion, you know, um, maybe it has happened, you know, that people have spoken about it. But I guess the, the focus has shifted on the powers that be, the, you know, the legal battle. But no one has spoken about the players, players who are potentially out of contract, as you're stating, what happens to them. It's a brutal world, Menzi. And, and I know that it's a world that you know well as, as someone who's worked with players, who's represented players. So take me through that, because I mean, it's something that even from my side, in my notes that I've written here, uh, I've brought in Tula Khanya, obviously, to, to speak from a player's point of view, but I never looked at it as deeply as that in terms of, obviously, all the other matters that have been mentioned by Tula Khanya and Antiani. Uh, yeah, well, so it's easy for, 
for the issue of the players to pull the heartstrings, yeah, well, because they are an important human resource um, when it comes to the game. And often it's it's a human resource that is heavily neglected by the powers that be, which is, is which is quite unfortunate. God, I mean, I feel Uguti, what we are really missing now is what led to these players being treated the way they're being treated. Uh, for me, it's not, <laughs> there's a cause, and then there are symptoms that are derived from the cause. Me and I, I feel until the PSL is sorted out in itself as a private entity that governs, governs professional football, we will continue having exploitation of players and coaches in our industry. Why am I saying that? In the early day to what we have now is one, a prosecution or the dealing of matters with PSL is a process that always drags on. Why? They are probably incapacitated, like Mr. Mabasa said, or there are just people there who are incompetent, or there are people there who don't want certain decisions to be taken. Now, let's let's look at logic, uh, guys. Had e e Royal AM won an extra three points, I guess we wouldn't be having this discussion because they would have been vindicated and whether they were awarded the three points or not, they still would have been promoted in Royal AM. So someone there was like, I waited out, the points will balance out themselves. Who in their right mind can take an executive decision based on that? And I'm not saying that's what they did. Anyway, coming back to the players, Abba Ghali arrived at Chatsworth Stadium, right in the bus. A person who and all rightful purposes has never kicked the ball, got to who, who's probably the finance, yeah, both that runs the ship, comes and tells them, listen, get back onto the bus, you're not playing league. Not only were these players mentally disturbed by that particular act, but they were disturbed by the fact that they were not training while Irichard's Bay and Chico were training. Yes, they had to be called back from home to come back and not even to a camp, just to come back to Durban. They're still not training. Yeah, well, had they had they played, they probably would have lost the game, to be honest with you. You know, and I know probably someone else will come with a different argument. So the issue of players, um, the likes of Utula Khan, who represent players and people in media space like Kubabu they they we can talk about it, we can write about it, we can try and expose it, but until there's a referendum on the PSL and the structures that govern that PSL, so Kubega Sibanama problems, Andre. That's, that's for me, the crux of the matter that we cannot run away from. And it's easy for us to, to dissect all of the symptoms well, but in, in themselves, individually, they make good stories. Yeah, but, but the big, big story for me is if, if Umab Tian is talking about PSL doing the same thing with PJ Stars 15 years ago, we still have the same problem, mind you, which means nothing has changed. Look at the, dy the dynamics of the, of the 16 team PSL structure. How many times have those people changed? Probably three or four or five seats max change. The rest of them are always there and have always been there. They think the same, they talk the same, they behave the same way. Anyone who challenges them gets kicked out of the circle of trust in King. We can't have football being run like that. But I, I wanted to say, I mean, one of the key things in our view uh, is that you see, you can, we, we can change that structure you know, as much as we want. But there is one element that we really do not discuss is the issue of sponsorship. You know, we hardly touch on the issue of sponsorship in so far as uh, a previously disadvantaged sports, in particular, a big sport like football is concerned. When we can improve, believe you me, if we can improve uh, the standards of uh, NFT, uh, that Africa championship and in, you know, uh, 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 put a few cents there, get some betting companies to uh, sponsor that, be the main sponsor and all that, increase the number of club, there will be a serious a shift in terms of where things are and where we ought to go. Because from where we sit, it's about resources. And uh, I mean, the point that you're making of players coming there, going to the stadium and so forth, it shows from where we sit in that it was just uh, uh, Royal AM looking for content. Maybe it's looking for content for uh, some of the uh, 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 shows somewhere there, but you cannot get the players into the bus, get them into the stadium, put them back into the, uh, into the bus and say, go. Without them, they don't have a say. It's just like getting cows, you kill them, you're going to shoot them, you kill them. No, no, today we're not going to kill, we killed enough. Uh, go back and so forth and not. So they are looking for content somewhere. We don't understand the reasoning because I, I, would, I would hate to believe that the advice they received not to play 
was given at the last minute or during that period of time when the players were in the dressing room and so forth. It was just for content issues. But let us focus on that. And so this is some of the things we I feel so that I think maybe we would have to sit and talk about the issue of sponsorship to say why is a sponsor still, you know, uh, having eyes looking at uh, previously advantage uh, sports. I mean, you would never have this thing in cricket, you never have this thing in rugby, but soccer as it were, we're still not attracting as much as we do understand there must be professionalism in terms of running the club. We need to professionalize our club. We need to do a lot of things, but let us at least increase the cake that we're sitting with we rather have, you know, 100 million in a basket and fight for that 100 million rather than having 20 million that we all need to, to be fighting for. So all these things are related. And I fully agree with my, with, with my leaders, but we say, let us look at it uh, uh, holistically and see how best we can address this particular matter. But the players must also, also be, be taken into consideration. So because a lot of them, they don't know where they will be re, uh, reporting after uh, the 30th of this month, which is very sad. Yeah, very sad indeed. And unfortunately, we've run out of time, gentlemen. I think this is a discussion we can continue to have, maybe post, I guess, the outcome of this entire debate um, with regards to promotion relegation. I know there's people that sit there and ask themselves, should a, a top flight team still be involved in, in the promotion relegation playoffs? Should it just be, the, 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 I guess, the teams in the Glad Africa contesting that? That's another debate that I'd like to have with you guys. But I really appreciate your time. Tian is already out and about. Tulakhanyo is probably flying to meet uh, a president um, from a president from somewhere. You know these important people. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. You are such an important person yourself, and thank you for giving us the time. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much, thank gentlemen. You Enjoy your weekend. All right.